On behalf of the pastors and our board of trustees, we welcome you to Colby Memorial Temple for our Sunday service. To begin our service, Marty Hadaway <laughs> will light three lights symbolizing the unity of body, mind, and spirit. Thank you, Marty. Now please rise as you are able for our opening prayer and remain standing for our first hymn. <laughs> Infinite Spirit, we thank you for bringing us here to Colby Temple this morning so that we may come together in your love and light. We ask that you open our hearts and minds so that we may be enriched and inspired as we join together in our fellowship today. Amen. Our first hymn, number 159, Open My Eyes, will be led by our vocalist, Jamie Osmond. Jamie? Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, me, spirit, Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth shall send it clear. And while the wave not fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. Suddenly now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my ears, even me, spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare love with thy children thus to share. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see. Open my heart is me, spirit divine. Thank you, you may be seated. Located on the handout and in the front cover of our hymnal are our Declaration of Principles. Please join with me in reciting these principles together. We believe in infinite intelligence. We believe that the phenomena of nature, both physical and spiritual, are the expressions of infinite intelligence. We affirm that a correct understanding of such expression and living in accordance therewith constitute true religion. We affirm that the existence and personal identity of the individual continue after the change called death. We affirm that communication with the so-called dead is a fact scientifically proven by the phenomena of spiritualism. We believe that the highest morality is contained in the golden rule. Whatsoever ye would that others should do unto you, do ye also unto them. We affirm the moral responsibility of the individual and that he makes his own happiness or unhappiness as he obeys or disobeys nature's physical and spiritual laws. We affirm that the doorway to reformation is never closed against any human soul here or hereafter. We affirm that the precepts of prophecy and healing contained in the Bible are divine attributes proven through mediumship. The healing prayer is located in the back of your hymnal. Please recite with me this prayer for spiritual healing. 
I ask the great unseen healing force to remove all obstructions from my body and to restore me to perfect health. I ask this in all sincerity and honesty, and I will do my part. I ask this great unseen healing force to help both present and absent ones who are in need of help and to restore them to perfect health. I put my trust in the love and power of God. Now, for those of you who would wish to receive spiritual healing, please take a seat along the wall on either side of the temple and go to the next available healer. While the healers work, the rest of us will join in a guided meditation. In a sitting position, take a deep breath, exhale, and sit comfortably as you are able with your feet on the floor and your hands in your lap, palms facing directly up or down. Now take another deep breath and exhale while letting your shoulders and upper arms relax. Now make sure that you are sitting as upright as is comfortable for you, sitting with your shoulders positioned over your hips and relax your back. Be aware of your upper legs and relax them. Stretch your toes softly and then relax them comfortably. As you take another deep breath and exhale, and become aware of your breath. Don't try to control it. Let it happen naturally. Now imagine that you are walking down a beautiful beach. Notice the pure white color of the sand under your feet and what is ahead of you and the bluish green water to your right. Notice the fragments of broken shells in the sand as you walk, the variety of colors of nature in the pieces of the shells, the whiteness of some, the soft beige color of others, and those with streaks of orange and coral colors in them. As you walk, feel the breeze on your face and on your shoulders and imagine the feeling of the fine droplets of the sea in the breeze. As you take your next breath, smell the freshness of the ocean. As you walk near the gentle waves washing on the sand near you, you can see the movement of the water towards the sand and then back into the ocean. Feel the gentle movement within you, become part of it, flow with it, in and out, as naturally as your breath flows, without control or effort, your breath as natural as the gentle waves, you are with and at peace with nature. As you walk along the beach, you come to a building with a dock extending out into the water. As you enter the building, you realize you have walked into a beachfront restaurant. There are people standing, people walking, people sitting, and there is a lot of talking. Your peacefulness is unexpectedly and temporarily interrupted just as can happen to you on any random day. But you can fix that when you need to clear your mind of all of the clutter, pressures, and stresses of the day so that you can just relax, go within, and be at peace with yourself. 
rather than becoming consumed by the chatter and conversation in the restaurant or in your mind, the stress and the worries and the to-dos that can clutter your mind. Tune them down so that they just become a humming noise, indistinguishable sounds. And then let them begin to fade away. These are not things that you need to focus on. Some of these things have been given to you by others and some you have taken on yourself but they don't own or control you. You can just let them go and not be consumed by them. Don't hold on to them as your issues or your possessions or your things to fix. Let them go, even just for this short time. Acknowledge them and let them float by, float through and out of your mind. And if you should have some of those things that stay stuck in your mind, some that stick around and are more difficult to let go of, we're going to let those go away too. Imagine that you are walking down the wooden pier leading from the restaurant out into the water. Tied to the pier are small boats on each side as you walk down the pier. As you walk down the pier, take one of the worries or stresses, one of the things that bother you, and imagine placing it inside of the first boat you come to. Now, untie the rope holding the boat to the pier and watch it drift out to sea, taking the thing that worries or stresses you with it. Then walk a little further down the dock to the next boat Place the next thing that worries or stresses you in that boat. Untie the rope. Give it a little push and watch it drift away from the dock out into the water. Continue walking down the dock, placing each thing in your mind into a boat. Push the boat out into the water to drift away and then go to the next. When all of the things that clutter your mind have been sent away, or when you get to the end of the dock with water all around you, sit on the edge of the dock and imagine all of the boats drifting further away, out of sight, carrying all of the things that occupied your mind. Feel free of the impact that they had on you. Feel relieved and with a clear mind. Now that all of your concerns are cleared from your mind, it's just you on the dock with the gentle sounds of the water moving under the dock. Sit here and relax. Feel free of your worries and concerns. Enjoy the sound. Enjoy the fresh smell of the water. Notice the blue sky up above. This is your time. Enjoy the next few moments of calm and quiet. As you sit there and look out into the water, you see a glowing cloud of bright white energy moving towards you. As it gets closer, it begins to take a form and you may recognize it as a familiar person who is close to you and who is now in spirit. Or maybe it's a spirit guide or your guardian angel or a beloved pet who you've missed since they journeyed over the rainbow bridge. Welcome them by your side on the dock. Feel their warm energy against your side, even though they are not physically touching you. It's a warm, loving energy of a supporting and caring being. And they've brought something for you. Maybe even just the gift of their presence and the awareness that they are still with you. 
I'm going to leave you here for a few moments to spend time with this loving energy. It's now time to thank you, thank them for the gift they may have brought you or for being with you and sharing the special gift of their presence. As you do, ask them to agree with you on a sign that they will use whenever they want to let you know that they are with you. The feel of a mother's embrace, a grandfather's gently touching of your hair, a grandmother moving things around in your kitchen, a spouse's arm gently placed around your shoulder, or a loved pet sitting in your lap once again. Take this time to think about how your visitor said they would re reconnect with you and commit to them and to yourself that you will do your best to be aware of their presence. As you bid them so long for now and stand, you start walking back down the dock to the beach. You notice that the boats have not come back to the dock, just as you are turning to the beach with your mind free of the clutter that you started this journey with. Enjoy it for as long as you are able and know that you can come back to the beach and to the boats tied at the dock once again whenever you need to send your worries of the day off and away so that you can feel the calm and peace within. Now start bringing your awareness back to your breath and with your eyes still closed, feel yourself sitting here at the temple. Now gently move your hands and your feet and your head and when you are ready, open your eyes. All right. We are all together again. If you have received a healing resulting in a correction or improvement, please complete the yellow card that is located in your hymnal. Looks like this. And give it to the pastor at the back of the temple or you may mail the card into us or place it in the collection plate when it comes around. We'd like to thank our healers for sharing their gift of healing this morning. Our healers from my left to right are Jackie Arnold, Marty Hathaway, Reverend Dr. Shelvin Gamberg, Cynthia Preston, who's now behind me, Joy Sagar, Reverend Deborah Gratton Gamberg and Robin Mattatino. Thank you all. I said that, I think, but thank you. I wouldn't want to leave them out. Um, please stand as you are able for our next hymn, number 155 in the garden. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right. Thank you. I come to the garden. Father, Jesus, lifted on the roses, and the voice I hear calling out. With me, and he talks with me, and he tells me things. And the joy we share, the sweet tears, none of us ever seen. He speaks, and the sound of his voice 
It's so sweet, the birds they're singing, and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. And he talks with me, and he tells me my own and the joy we share as we tell we know no other has ever known. I'd stay in the garden with him for the night before me, but he bids me go through the voice of words, his voice to me is calling. He talks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me my soul, and the job we chant, we chant, none of her has ever no. Beautiful. You may be seated. All right. It is now that I am happy to introduce our speaker for today, Reverend Diane Davis. Diane is a longtime resident of Casadega and a very well-known teacher and speaker here. She speaks inspirationally, always interesting and informative, and typically with some sampling of her enjoyable sense of humor. So please join me in welcoming our speaker, Reverend Diane Davis. Well, this morning I used a lotion and it's called Revive. I think I need a vat and about four cartons of bottles so I can lay it in for about four years. And by that time, maybe collagen will return. <laughs> You'll see. So today I wanted to talk about courage. Um, courage to me is incredibly significant. And I wanted to talk about courage. I wanted to talk about choice. I wanted to talk about change because there are so many things that all of us, and I mean all of you and me too, have faced in our lives, which to others may not seem significant. And yet it has required courage. Courage is something that Many people uh, think it has to be some great act that has been performed or some noted experience or event that has been participated in. That's not necessarily true. You've shown courage possibly the very first time a teacher ever called on you in class. You have shown courage many times in your life, perhaps on a playground when you were little. You have shown courage, and there is courage that to me is something that in our lives at this time is really needed. And the reason I say that is not because you have to be political and not because you have to feel one way or another about any issue or situation. But what it is is the fact that our first principle is the fact that the infinite resides within you and it will throughout your life from your first breath to your last and beyond it. The amazing thing about the infinite is it has no prejudice. It has no right or wrong and it has no thing that occurs with you having to earn the right in your life to accomplish any of the things you desire. That sounds a little odd, but I call the infinite the isness because to me it is all things. That power and presence is within you. You don't have to call it forth. All you have to do is recognize it and move with it. And it doesn't mean that you have to have some conscious focused thought about it either. 
because it is within you, every breath you take, every blink of your eyes. And the fascinating part is because our, our second principle is about how it's expressed in nature and physically and spiritually. And that is a, a feeling that we have in our community and, and within all the people who have sat where you are today. Some of those people who sat where you today are, are today have been brave, and I mean brave, because many, many years ago, the prejudice, and there has been, over what we believe, who we are, and what we do, those of us who do whatever we do, has been there. So today is a day of courage, and it's a day of courage so that you understand that the definition to me of courage is to overcome fear, to overcome the fears that might be the big fears that you have. The fear of speaking in public was with me years and years and years ago, but I just had the audacity to try. So in the fifth grade, I was in a talent show. See, I know. And in that talent show, I pantomimed and I won the talent show. You know, it's fifth grade. How many, how many choices of candidates were there? I don't want to know. But the fascinating thing is, I mined to a record, and it was a record recording of Eloise at the Plaza in New York. And to this day, I remember the first line, hi, I'm Eloise, I'm six, I live on the top floor. Well, it turned out many years later, I would meet Eloise Page, a minister, medium, and profound teacher and speaker here in our community. I never correlated the two. I figured talent in fifth grade, mining something wasn't a big deal. But at the time, for that fifth grader, it was a big deal. So the many things that you've overcome, the many things that you may allow yourself to embrace, keep going. So yesterday, in my car, I was driving on 1792. Most of you are familiar with that main route. And I was coming from Orange City, and I was going to be coming home. I live here in the community. And, and when I got to a, a stoplight, the light was red. I was the first one that would be um, leaving when the light turned green. And there was another lane of traffic to my left. So I noticed one reason I had moved over into the right lane was because there was this little hot rod or that was in this little silver car. It had one of those things on the back that I think are for wind or something. I don't, you know, this is where my ignorance will show and I don't care. <laughs> so anyway, he pulled, he, you know, I want to give it that masculine touch. Anyway, this person pulled up right next to me, and there we are, the light is red. Red light, it's a red light. It's a major intersection. Traffic was gonna be coming this way, right? And so a silver SUV came up right behind the little guy with the wind thing. I mean, very close. So I figured maybe they knew each other or something. And then the next moment, the light's red. They go across the, the intersection and continue on down 1792. And I'm sitting in the car going, and I looked in my rearview mirror. I thought maybe they knew something I didn't know. Maybe, maybe there are sirens and lights behind us. Maybe, you know, I didn't know. And I just sat there. And then I thought, well, maybe the light's broken and I'm supposed to go. You don't do these kind of things? Anyway, and so, I accused a little hot rider of doing an illegal thing. I know none of you project about stuff, do you? Right. 
Anyway, and then I realized that maybe they thought the light was green. Hmm, thought. Within you, the energies that are within you, they begin to allow you to make sense of things. You begin to expand out and join with that so that you can embrace a thought or an idea. And then you allow yourself to take control of you in the circumstance or the situation, perhaps. And then there's this wonderful place where you start to discern and you start to feel, okay, am I involved in this or not? And then there's a wonderful balancing that takes place within you. And all of this happens within a nanosecond. Because these energies flow through you constantly. And they are part of a part of the infinite that we recognize. So then there, there becomes, well, when have I done something with a red light? Well, I know none of you have. Is that true? Right. So I remember one morning that I, as I was approaching this light over there, um, that all of a sudden the light became red and I was already in motion. And so I realized that I was going to be going through this intersection. And I pushed on my horn to let everybody know there was a parade passing by. <laughs> what have you done? So one of those energies helps you to define and recognize your past. And it, and it helps you to define you a great deal. And then there's this potential thing where the potential. So there I am sitting, I'm watching this hot rodder, I'm going to accuse this person. Um, but anyway, I'm watching them go way down the road. And uh, now I'm accusing them of doing an illegal thing. And then all of a sudden, my mind started moving about it. And I realized they're not necessarily doing anything illegal consciously, they may not recognize that the light was red for whatever reason. And it's not to accuse them of, you know, being drunk or on drugs or it's not that. And yet how many things do you project in your life about circumstances, other people, your loved ones, your kids, your parents, who, and you think you know what they're doing and why? Well, courage happens to be where you take a step and you recognize from it and you have overcome a fear and all of a sudden you say, wow, that was really something and I got through it. That infinite that is within all things, it's within the floor that your feet are on. It's within the carpet in the aisle right beside you. It's within the air that you're breathing. It's in all things. The beauty of that is at any moment to draw upon it consciously with a focus of intention if you want to. And it's up to you. There's no punishment in your life if you don't believe the same way somebody else does. There's nothing that you have to do in order to earn your way. There's everything in life that presents itself and all it is is how you focus and how you focus you and what's important to you. My whole life has been about self-realization. I wanted to understand me and I wanted to understand me in connection with the rest of the world because all of you are important in my world because it helps me make this happen. This same with you, all the people, all. So it's everybody. And that to me is when the statement is made, we are one. 
To me, it's not a romanticism as much as it is a recognition, a recognition that you, if you look around this room, everybody's dressed differently. There was somebody who was gonna wear red today and she decided not to mimic me. Thank you, I appreciate it. I'd have a little trouble being as slender as you are, but I could try. So, choice, choice. So I had the ability at that point to follow the people who had gone through the red light because nobody had started to come this way. They'd probably all been paranoid at that moment, not knowing what was gonna be happening. And then all of a sudden they started coming across the intersection and I felt relief because then I realized I'm on the earth plane and it's okay. This is all okay. But choice becomes what you have every moment of your life, every day, every breath. Choice. And the incredible part about choice is because that infinite is residing within all of us all the time, is choices can change. So as I sat there at the red light, I realized because I knew that I had done that a thing several months ago, and it had made, made me be conscientious about paying attention. And it wasn't just about being older. I don't think Hot Rod Harry was older, just saying. I think it's about being conscious. Our lives are changing. They're changing rapidly and quickly we can't always keep up with it. Doesn't mean it's right or wrong, good or bad. It's just sometimes it's overwhelming and sometimes in humanity, it's very difficult. And what do you do to help you be who you are? You make choices. One of my choices is chocolate. And I'm very fortunate because I have friends who bring me chocolate a lot. And so I have a freezer full of chocolate. If you ever go through withdrawal, call me. I'll be happy to help you out. But there's choices and the choices allow for change. And change is what, to me, all of it is about. Our world is changing. Our earth is changing. There are teachings that say we're creating deserts in wetlands. Is that something that you have to worry about? No. Is that something you can do? Well, you can plant a couple of cacti and see what they do. But what, what I'm getting at is our world is changing. The Earth's pattern is changing. The air we breathe is shifting. The molecular structure of some things is altering. And whether you believe that or not, it's real okay, but I've got the mic so far and I have a few more minutes. But the changes are our attitudes, our feelings, and our awareness. So I wanna go back to courage because courage is overcoming fear. And the hardest part about our past is that we live it every day and we keep it here instead of leaving it there. So it doesn't mean that it always should all be in the background, but I don't need to worry about talent as a fifth grader or other accomplishments that have been mine in the past. What I get to do is discover today and how to participate and how to share. A lot of times people are so hooked into what was or what should be that their choices for change are limited. That's not right, wrong, good, or bad. It just is what it is. 
But the statement, it is what it is, is a starting point. It's not an ending. It's a starting point for each of us to consider the choices that we have and how we want to live our lives and to move towards that. Not from a selfish standpoint always, but maybe it will be. Not from a selfless standpoint where everybody else has priority because that's when you'll feel invisible. But maybe it will be because that's what you learned back here. But what about today? And what about your joy? And what about your sense of hope? There's a beautiful word that is used in a lot of religious teachings, grace. And grace is often whatever occurs for any of us is perhaps bigger, better, and more than what we feared. And it's going to be time ahead where we continue to face more changes and challenges. Our world in this area, for any of you who have lived here for a long time, constantly, you know, I'm joking by saying they add water and we sprout more cars all the time. We sprout more people living here. There's no right or wrong, good or bad with it. It is what it is. And those people have a right to do what they're doing as well. But while we're in that, what are you going to do? And how are you going to do it in order to maintain you? So we have a set of principles. And one big one is the golden rule. And a lot of people seem to lose that momentum about it at certain times. But to me, my golden rule is act the way you want others to react to you and with you. And so in order to enjoy your Sunday afternoon, there hopefully is some pleasure. There hopefully is opportunity. There hopefully is courage for you and whatever you're facing. You know, when I bought a house, it was the first one I purchased and the only one I've purchased in my whole life. Thing. Years ago, buying my first car, How about you? Oh, and then there was the crush. When I was in first grade, I got a crush on Harry. I know, I'm wild about Harry. Um, thank you, Jamie. Um, but what I'm getting at is all of us, all of us have had such important things and all of us have had challenges and all of us have had disappointments and all of us continue to go through life and life isn't the fact that you're going to be joyful and happy about everything that occurs for you, but what it will provide for you is that presence of all things that resides within you constantly and that you can draw upon at any moment for your healing of your physical body, for the healing of your mind and your emotions. And when you do, it doesn't have to be a specific prayer. It doesn't have to be a prescribed anything because it's already here. All you get to do is focus and know that that presence is there. And then watch life, just observe it because You'll have the courages. Some of you have courage to be in this building today, and I understand that. And thank you for coming. And no, I'm not done. But some of you have had a lot of courage to face a lot of things and will continue to do so. 
And some of you counsel the very people that go through many challenges. And some of you are healers. And so you're wanting to assist the rest of the world and people in what they experience and do with that sense of courage. And courage means to overcome fear. And so I'm gonna leave you with something. And that is the recognition that you may have scars from your past and you may have circumstances that weren't easy and that's understandable, and those are not slight or diminished in, in, in their importance. But what you do have is you have this incredible universe that we are a part of. And this incredible universe is here to help us, and I say all of us, as we learn to flow and go. So for today, if there's a challenge where you have to have the courage to face something, no matter how teeny or how big, mine will be having lunch. I don't get lunch until early afternoon. However, it will be either something to look forward to or something to grumble about. That's a choice. And the change is, I may have something I've never had before and have a new experience in life. And that's my hope for all of you in your future. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Reverend Diane, for another of your always interesting and enjoyable messages. During our musical interlude, we will be passing the collection basket. We thank you in advance for your generosity. And our musical interlude will be presented by our vocalist, Jamie. So I'd like to bring her back to the platform. Yes, you do. So as oft times, if you guys know me very well, I come here and I have no idea what I'm singing. And then halfway through the sermon, um, they tell me to do something different. So I said to Diane, what should I sing? And she's like, let's do a sing-along. We're doing a sing-along. So let's turn to page 179 because I don't want to hear me today. I want to hear you guys, okay? So we're going to do this little light of mine. You can stand up if you'd like. You can stay seated if you like. Uh, for those of you who have the tambourines, let's go. All right? <laughs> This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go. I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Building a world, I'm going to let it shine. Building a world. I'm gonna let it shine, building up a world. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let's repeat the first one again. This little light of mine, sing it loud. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, shine, let it shine. You guys are beautiful. You may be seated. Thank you.
All right, let's take an attitude of prayer, please. Infinite intelligence, we thank you for these generous offerings this morning, and we ask that you guide our co-pastors and board of trustees as they employ them in the upkeep of Southern Casadega Spiritualist Camp facilities and grounds so that all that is available to us today in this special place will be available for future generations to enjoy. Amen. All righty. Now for a few announcements and get comfortable because we have a very busy next few days going on. So I have a number of announcements. Um, next Wednesday, February 28th, our Wednesday night message service message bearer will be Lori Carter. Next Sunday, March 3rd, our guest speaker in our 1030 service will be Pauline Gold, who's with us this morning. Every Sunday, we have Adult Lyceum, also known as Sunday School, from 9.30 until 10.15 a.m., just down the street in the Andrew Jackson Davis Building, and that's where the bookstore is located. And next Sunday, March 3rd, our Lyceum speaker is Jody Martinez, and she'll be speaking in uh, the second of, our, of her series on the science of spiritualism. Please join us and Jody next week at Lyceum. And now for some announcements of upcoming events. This afternoon, Reverend Phil DeLong will be providing a workshop from 2 to 4 p.m. in the Andrew Jackson Davis Building titled Healing with Color. Reverend Phil asks that you bring a picture of a loved one and a pendulum if you have one. We also have our new member orientation this afternoon from 1 p.m. to 2.30 right here in Colby Temple. This will be session two, but as a reminder, you don't have to attend session one to be able to attend this one. While all three sessions must be completed for prospective members, they don't need to be taken in order. Um, it's a busy afternoon. This afternoon in the bookstore from noon till 3 p.m., we will have a book signing by author Jody Calhoun for her book, You'll Know It When You See It. The book is about a woman who embarks on a magical adventure in her life that truly expresses spiritual principles. And finally, I'd like to remind everyone that we are continuing to ask for donations to totally upgrade our outdated and sometimes unpredictable sound system um, here in Colby Temple. Uh, we have our donation jar uh, in the back of the temple and would greatly appreciate any help that you can provide uh, in helping us reach our goal. If you would like to participate in absentee healing, please print the name and first initial of the last name of a loved one, friend, or even a pet in our healing book, which is located in the back corner of the temple. Flyers for camp events are also at the back of the temple. Um, and we have an activities calendar and church bulletin in your hymnal. Uh, and that is for you. You're welcome to take that home and uh, even pick up a copy in the back to take to a friend or family member. Our website, casadega.org, also has the monthly information as well as all of our upcoming events. Now, please stand for our next hymn, number 45, I Feel Like Traveling On. I think that yes. My I have a I feel my 
All right, and now for the message portion of our service, I'd like to bring back Reverend Diane Davis. Okay, well, I uh, we don't really need to do this part because then we can finish and I could get to lunch easier. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, the woman over here, you have a plaid shirt on. I think your your tank is brown or green or you understand? I'm speaking to you, ma'am. Do you want a message? Oh, good. I had planned on it, to tell you the truth. So speaking of plans, the latter part of this month, and there's not a whole bunch of it left, but going into mid-March, I see you working with the calendar and trying to get some plans um, solidified would maybe be a good word for the latter part of the summer and into the early part of the fall. And I would wanna tell you that there's gonna be a lot of activity at that time later this year, 2024, and I feel really productive with it for you and, and your participation in it. It also feels to me as though you're going to notice that your ability to work with detail is going to be refined a lot. Refining doesn't mean that you have to do anything. What it means to me is that you're going to have a chance to either upgrade or notice that your skills or um, capability are expanding. And so that definition and detail is going to be rather important in what you're doing and what you're focusing on as you get later towards the spring and the month of May. This is a time period that the last two years have been a challenge. And I feel as though that you're moving away from that a great deal and have made efforts to understand. And I want to commend you for that. And I want to say, keep going. And because of the fact that you were at a time when you didn't think things could work out to be better, but they're starting to be better, aren't they? And that's going to continue on. And it's also going to continue on with the business. One other thing, and then I'm not supposed to talk to you for a half hour, but it's okay. It's the fact that I think you're also very artistic. I figured. And I am very I want to just mention to you, September, October, November, you're going to do something specific with that creativity. You're going to either teach or present or exhibit. And I want to say, yes. Okay. So all that's expanding and it includes traveling to the Northeast for that. That'll be very, very enjoyable. And thank you. Okay, I'm going to leave her alone because I know that I'm pushing really hard. Does anybody want a message? Jackie, your little arm went up. <laughs> <laughs> 
really fast. Okay. Have I read for you before? Not lately. Not lately. Jackie, I've been around here for a long time, so not lately can be, or anyway, um, what I want to mention to you is this, that this year, 2024, as you get in through the month of May and on through June, this is a time of change. And I think you're going to notice the changes that you're able to make. These aren't things that are, these aren't things that are thrust upon you. These are not things that are disasters or difficulties. These are changes that you're going to feel that you can make and that you're ready to do. And I feel like I want to tell you one of them is you're going to let loose of something that has become a little bit of a ball and chain around your ankle. And then I saw you do this. And brushing your hands off to me means you're done. Something's finishing. But I feel really nice with that. And I will tell you that that's going to be a relief for you. You're going to feel it also in your physical body. You have a little sensitivity in the respiratory system. And it just feels like, like um, irritation. It could be allergic response to the seasonal things that are, keep on going on around us here. But what I want to mention to you is this. There's a gentleman who I feel has passed away connected to you. And he passed away with a respiratory difficulty or disease. And I, and I feel that very directly because his breathing was deeply affected. I felt as though as I touch in with him, I also want to just mention that it feels to me that there are two dogs that I feel have been important to you in the early years of your life. And I get to, and, and the feeling I have with this is in these next 16 to 18 months, what I want to encourage you to do is acquire more animals. <laughs> this is a neighbor. My whole peace of mind might be broken up soon. But I, I really mean that very sincerely for you. And these are not goldfish. I just let it go. We don't really consider fish animals, but that's a biological question from the seventh grade. Anyway, one other thing I want to mention is the fact that it feels to me that I want to pay attention in the driving because it feels to me that there's something of getting distracted more and more, and whatever that is, don't take that as a judgment criticism, just take it as an awareness so that if there are things that need adjustment, do them before you get on the road, okay? And, and mainly just because you have a lot of people kind of pulling, pulling at you from different directions, and that could be very disorienting in itself. So it's been a pleasure to have you here and talk with you. Okay, one more. Can, I, don't even, I can't see the clock, so I could talk all afternoon, but that's not allowable. Just saying. I'm not supposed to read for people I know. We have a very warm pastor named Reverend Deb. She's in the back of the room. She held her hand up and waved a lot. You did. See? Okay. Deb, I want to encourage you to start the book and get it going. Now, I don't think it's at the beginning stages, but I think you're standing back and you need to step up and step forward with it. And I feel that that will be something that is more connected with not only your current situation here in our community, 
but also the past in your social work and the other things that you've participated in because of examples. And that's going to be rather significant. There is a feeling also that the latter part of March coming right up into the early part of April, I see you with papers or documents. These are not your current tax return, but I see you signing something. And when you do, again, it's like I've mentioned, it just feels like done. Something's completed and that's gonna be a relief for you. And it's gonna relieve you also of some financial pressure or stress. And that too is going to be very helpful because mid to late April into the month of May is a time period you could easily want to travel or be on the road periodically uh, visiting loved ones. And I would just want to say, yes, you'll be able to go. There's also something with the month of July because it feels like in July, um, you're, there's something that you're going to be doing that is more connected to an outreach program. And that can be pretty broad in its definition. I understand that. But I think it's something that you've had in mind. And I, it feels like it starts to come together as an idea. And there's three other people that are going to be participating with you as a committee or a council, a group, a team. And that I feel also is really, really beneficial, not just for you, but for outreach, meaning outside the community here. And I feel like it has meaning to you because it's something in the past that you would have had connection to uh, or you would have had familiarity with and those talents or that experience is going to be something you're going to be moving forward in your life. One other thing is I just feel also that as I'm, as I'm speaking with you, I'm very aware of a mother. And as I'm aware of her, I just want to mention to you that I feel like there, there was like weakness of the body prior to the passing here. Just that very weak. And as I as I am aware of her, I would want to say also she points. I didn't do anything. She points to your legs. And I get the words, we did it. You understand? I thought you would. That's a private thing. But the beauty of it with her is the fact that I also hear her humming. And when you were very little, she used to hum with you or to you. And, and there's something very sweet in this exchange. And as I am completing it, I am very aware of lilacs. And I'm gonna leave them just that way. And thank you. And thank you all for letting me be here. And you know something, there's more to come. And it doesn't involve me, but there's more to come. So you can sit tight if you want. Well, not necessarily tight, but you know. Thank you, Reverend Diane, for those messages today. Um, and as Diane may have just alluded to, uh, we'd like to remind everyone that we will have our afternoon message service from 12 noon until approximately 1230 today, right here in Colby Temple. A group of mediums and student mediums will be giving sp spirit greetings to as many individuals as they can reach in approximately 30 minutes. And everyone is welcome. We encourage you to visit our bookstore, which is open from 11.30 to 5 p.m. today and open Monday through Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Now, please rise as you are able for our closing hymn, number 203, Let There Be Peace on Earth, 
And then please remain standing for our closing prayer. Let there be peace on earth, and let us begin with me. Let peace on earth, and let us begin with me. With God, the Lord, we Let us walk with each other in the name of the Let peace be with me. Let this be the Lord We need to take. Let this be my song. <laughs> Great infinite spirit and source of love and light. We thank you for bringing us together today. And we thank you for the words of our speaker and the messages you have provided to us through her this morning. As we leave, we ask that you shine our light on us so that we may have a safe, fulfilling, and joyous day. Amen. Thank you for coming. Enjoy the rest of your day.